Hi friends, welcome to another tutorial. Today we dive in into a crucial aspect of Spring Boot web development, exception handling. Imagine we are building a RESTful API, for example for a blog platform. Our goal is to handle exceptions gracefully to ensure that our users have a smooth experience. I prepared some project already for our blog post. It's a very simple project just to show you how we can handle exceptions using Spring instruments. Okay, first of all, we have blog post. Blog post simple class which has only three fields. Then we have blog post service. I haven't realized it, um, implemented it yet. It's just a service with two methods find by ID and save blog post. And we have blog post controller which will handle API requests for our blog post, for get by ID and save. So we have our blog controller, which handling requests. But what happens if, for instance, we encounter an exception while trying to manipulate a blog post? In real world scenarios, this could be a database connection issue or non-existent post. It also be an invalid user input issue. We need to handle these situations properly in our application. There are various ways to handle exceptions in Spring Boot. Today we explore REST controller advice annotation and exception handler method. The REST controller advice annotation in Spring is a very powerful mechanism for handling exceptions globally across multiple controllers in Spring REST application. Its primary purpose is to centralize exception handling logic, making it more modular, reusable, and easier to maintain. There are also controller advice annotations in Spring for handling exceptions globally across multiple controllers in Spring MVC application. Its primary purpose to centralize uh, exception handling logic, make it, it more reg modular, reusable, and easier to maintain and return ex uh, error pages for Spring MVC application. Of course, if you don't know what is a Spring MVC, please refer to our previous video for pre from previous tutorials where I explain uh, Spring MVC and where we write an example on Spring MVC. I will leave a link in the description. Uh, here's how controller advice works and how it can be used globally across controllers. When you annotate a class with controller advice, it becomes a global exception handler. This means it can catch and handle exceptions uh, thrown from any controller in the application. So you have one global class, you mark it as a REST controller advice, and it will become exception handler. The the cent this centralization avoids duplicating exception handling code across multiple controllers. Uh, within a REST controller advice class, you can define methods annotated with exception handler to handle specific exception types. This allows you to provide a custom logic for different types of exceptions. Uh, let's dive into an example. I will uh, implement my blog post service class just to throw some exceptions like not found exception, validation exception, and then I will try to handle these exceptions in my REST controller advice. First of all, let me implement my find by ID. So I need to loop through the posts, find by a post by ID and then return it. Otherwise I will return exception. I will throw exception like resource not found exception. Okay, let me create first of all package exception. I will store my custom exceptions there. Exception. I will create a new class, resource not found exception. I will extend it from runtime exception, and then my class will become exception class. And what else? I will provide a constructor just for one field for message. I want users to provide a message of the error. And the I will call constructor from runtime exception and it will I will pass message to this constructor. And as you can see, we will set up message for this exception. 
Then uh, in the controller advice, we will use this message to demonstrate the error message to the user. Okay, once I have my uh, resource not found exception, I can throw it. I loop through the posts using stream and filter using filter from stream and I say that post get ID should be equals to ID and find first or else throw resource not found exception and let's provide some message like post not found by ID and we will provide which ID was specified and why it wasn't found. Okay, let's just implement our next method. Yeah, I need to rename it to the post. Uh, next method is save. Save is easy, we just need to add our post to the posts. As you can see, I don't use database in this example, but that's totally fine. I'll store my objects in list, in array list, but you can use uh, this uh, exception handling in, handler in any application using database or other uh, sources of uh, data. And let me implement some custom validation for my blog post. What if, for example, blog post, post is null? So if post is null, then I want to throw, for example, new uh, validation exception. Of course, I need to create it. And in this case, I also provide constructor with message for my validation exception. After that, I can throw it and say that post can be null, for example. Another thing I want to Validate, for example, is ID, it shouldn't be null, and it shouldn't be less than zero. And if, for example, post get ID is null, or post less than zero, then I want to throw validation exception with different message, post ID is incorrect. And I also want to avoid duplicated IDs in my posts. So let me just create uh, a check that ID is unique. I want to loop through uh, stream through the posts and check if any match uh, that ID of posts is equal to uh, my provided uh, post ID. And if it's true, I want to throw another type of exception, for example, constraint violation exception uh, that will inform user that uh, ID is uh, duplication uh, duplicated and he needs to provide another ID. I need to rename this class constra constraint and I provide constructor.
something like this. I wanted to show you as much uh, types of exception as possible. For example, validation exception, constraint violation exception, resource not found exception. Uh, what, what else we can uh, check? We can also check that, for example, uh, title is not blank, right? Because is blank post get title because we want to make this title as uh, title as mandatory for example and is blank checks that string is not uh, is null or is empty and we want to throw violation validation exception for example uh, title is incorrect something like that and that's probably all. Uh, let's run our application. As you remember, we uh, we call these methods from the service in our controller. And let's check how uh, these exceptions will work without exception handler. Uh, what do we receive in our services? Uh, first of all, let's try to find um, correct, uh, let's call correct request post by ID one will return us uh, object of our post, which we provided uh, here. Blog post with ID one, title content one. Everything works as you can see, but what, what if I specify, for example, uh, ID four, which is not existent. Let's click send and we receive internal server error uh, it shows us nothing about the error itself. And this is confusing. Uh, this error is confusing uh, because a user can't understand what, uh, what went wrong in our application. And is, if you can see in the logs, if you, if you see the logs, you will see that we actually threw, uh, threw an exception a resource not found exception post not found by id4 but since we don't have proper exception handling in our application uh, clients will see this uh, incorrect uh, i mean um, not informative exceptions and of course uh, the same way we uh, we receive in our post for example if i try to save post with the same ID, I will receive internal server error because as you can see, duplicate ID. Let's create our uh, ex uh, controller advice. Let's create a separate package. And let's create our exception controller advice. You can name this class uh, as you want. Uh, it, uh, uh, it doesn't matter for the application. It will work with any name of this class. Uh, just make sure you add this uh, REST controller advice annotation and this class becomes a global exception handler. And let's say we want to handle our validation exception. We need to use another annotation, exception handler, and we need to specify, for example, uh, validation exception class. It's the class we want to handle in this method, and then the method itself. Uh, in the return object, we want to return some custom message for the user, and let's create some, for example, some error, uh, error model just to return it to the user, let's create a separate class and call it error model. And we will provide two fields. For example, uh, add data to generate, generate getters and setters. And let's provide message. And for example, let's provide uh, timestamp. You can return any number of fields uh, as you want, uh, the uh, just make sure that they are informative for the user. Okay, and in the response we want to return response entity, 
error model and we call our method handle validation exception and in the this method we will have runtime exception and if we uh, this method will be triggered every time our application throws a uh, validation exception and what we want to return we want to return bad request for example you can return any uh, any status any object you want on this exception response entity bad request and let's provide a body for this uh, bad request new error model and let's add some well, args constructor and let's provide exception get message and local date time now something like that and another exception for example for resource not found And we want, let me just copy paste it. We just need to change the name of our method. And we res the response uh, by object, right? Because, uh, sorry. Yeah, this one. And we need to change, for example, if resource not found, I want to return uh, not found. And I want to also to re return body. Uh, but uh, not found uh, a method from the response entity uh, doesn't allow me to return body. But of course, I can <laughs> provide my custom status. HTTP status not found value. I just use a uh, constant from HTTP status not found instead of providing 404 because I don't want to hard code 404. But this status accepts just in uh, integer value of the status. And then I can provide body. In the body, I will also specify exception message and uh, time when it happened. And let's say I want to uh, throw um, to handle validation exception and constraint violation exception in the same method. Uh, we can do this. We can just provide a constraint exception in this exception handler annotation, and this exception handler annotation will catch and validation exception and constraint violation exception. And we can also fix our naming because it uh, says that it will handle only validation exception, but let me just add handle con validation exception and constraint constraint uh, violation exception something like that and yeah that's pretty much it uh, let's restart our application and see how it will behave now uh, first of all let's try a post and as you can see as you can see uh, now we have bad request status and we have informative message exactly the same message we provided in the exception and we also have timestamp I don't know, maybe it will help someone who debug this or maybe someone from the front end team or other service team. And for example, you can try to get post and you will receive not found if it's not found. And you will see which ID you provided and why it's not found. And you can also, for example, provide correct ID, but you provide empty title and 
as you can see you see post title is in correct message and this is much informative than 500 and there you have it exception handling in Sprint Boot doesn't have to be complicated as you can see with the right annotations and practices you can make your application more robust and user friendly and as you can see you don't need to waste a lot of time for it just add proper annotations to your class and handle your exceptions using a global exceptions handler uh, that's it for today don't forget to subscribe to the channel i see you in the, in the next video goodbye